Hello, and welcome to Rust Electricity for Beginners. My name is Ozzy, and in this episode we'll take a look at one of the most important parts of understanding circuitry, which is the problem-solving mindset. To do this, we'll be using two new components, the splitter and the fluid switch and pump, in order to build an automatic water sprinkler system. Everything we're using in this video is craftable on the Tier 1 workbench. We'll be using the switch, electrical branch, blocker, timer, ceiling light, and electric heater, which we've discussed before in this series. We'll also be using the splitter, fluid switch and pump, sprinkler, water barrel, and the large planter box's little brother, the small planter box, which is a default blueprint. Now if you've been following the series, you'll notice I added a water barrel to our base, which allows us the ability to store up to 20,000 milliliters of water. And the reason for this is because when I'm out roaming, I like to keep the seeds I find for extra cloth and berries for tea and stuff like that. So I'm going to add a couple of planter boxes to my base, and then we're going to put a automatic sprinkler system in so I don't have to micromanage these crops. Now there is space in here for a large planter box, but I'm just doing these two little ones because I think I'm going to put my tier 2 workbench against that wall once I finally craft one. I'm then going to add a sprinkler above the planters, and because I already know we're going to be going against gravity, I'm going to put this pump here in our electrical room. I'm also going to remove this door because it'll give us a little bit more room just for the sake of this video. And when I do circuitry, I like to think about the purpose that I'm trying to achieve. What's the goal? And it allows me to cut back on the electrical clutter and keeps me focused. So the goal right now is to get water from this barrel to this sprinkler in order to water my crops. Well, I already know that going against gravity, I'm going to have to connect it to this pump instead. Now I could just pull power from my power bank directly into the power on the pump, turn the pump on, and call it a day. But the problem with that is I already know this is going to be a way more water than what I need to put into my planters, and I don't want to be spending that much time filling up my water barrel. So essentially what I want this circuit to do is to be able to control how long that pump is active for and how often to make that pump active. One of the ways I can do this is with a double timer system. Falling off my boxes. So essentially what I would do with this is I would set this time for how long I want the pump to run for, and I would set this timer for how often I want this timer to activate. For example, if I want the pump to run for 10 seconds every minute, I could set these two timers for 10 and 60, and then every 60 seconds have this timer activate this one, so that this one activates the pump for 10 seconds. Now while I'm building the circuit, I'm going to set these for 3 and 5, just because I'd rather test with much shorter times. Now when you're building a circuit, you can do it a number of ways. You can start looking at the amount of power you're going to use, and in what ways. You can look at what's the activation method, you can look at what particular components you're using. For this one, we're going to start with power. I know I'm going to need one power going into this pump, in order to have it be powered and on. I know I'm going to need one power out of this timer into the pump in order to toggle it on, and then I'm going to need one power from this timer into this timer in order to activate it. When I have multiple components that use similar amounts of power, my first thought is to use a splitter. The way the splitter functions is it takes its power input and divides it equally amongst its active outputs. You'll see I have six power coming in and no power going to the outputs. It's because they're not connected. Once I connect one, it divides that power evenly between its outputs. Since there's only one current output, it pulls all six. So I'm going to plug all of these into the splitter. And then we'll see what we can do with the circuit. So now that we have three outputs, you'll see the six power is divided evenly into two for each one, which I think is more than I'm going to use, but for right now while I'm building the circuit, I'm not super concerned about it. I can always adjust the power later. I also know that I'm going to want this timer to be able to activate this toggle so that whenever it activates, the pump is going and the sprinkler is sending water. And then once the timer is off, so is the pump. Now the next thing I want is for this timer to activate the one on the left, so I'm going to send its power out to this timer's activation so that when this one turns on, so does the one on the left. Now the only thing we have left to figure out is how to get this timer to reactivate itself each time it stops. 
And one of my thoughts is maybe if we put an electrical branch over here on the left and split the power out, and then we send one power to the pump and one power to the other timer, perhaps this one can activate the one on the right. Which it will do, but the problem we're going to run into is that now that this one ends before this one, there's no way for it to activate this one again. Another thing that I can think of is blockers are good for sort of reversing what a circuit does. Right now, this timer is activating this one at the beginning of its pulse. But if I instead have this one activate at the end of its pulse, perhaps it'll work. So I'm going to take power from this splitter and I'm going to plug it into the blocker instead of the pump. We'll figure out how to power that again in a minute. And then I'm going to take power from this blocker and put it into this timer. Essentially what's happening is the first timer is blocking power from activating the timer on the left. And then once it's over and it's no longer black blocking this power, the blocker will send power through to activate the timer on the left. The timer on the left sends power through to activate the timer on the right, which begins the cycle all over again. So now that this is working, all I need to do is add power back to our pump. So I'm going to add a branch over here, plug that into our power bank instead. Branch out to my splitter, power out to my pump. And then I need to reconfigure this for the amount of power I'm using. Well, I'm using one in the blocker to activate the timer. I'm using one in this timer to activate the blocker. And then I'm using two in this timer, one for the pump, and one to activate the other timer. So we need four in total. Now, earlier I said that splitters divide their power in evenly amongst their outputs. Well, if their outputs aren't even, what it does is it sends the remainder first through the first active output and then the second. So since I have four coming in, it'll send one to each and then an additional one to the first one, giving us two, one, and one. If I were to send five power in, it would give us two, two, and one, and then six would once again divide it evenly two across. So this is essentially our circuit fully operational. The only issue is, yes, I can now adjust how long it is active for and how often it activates, but if I want the system off completely, say if I go offline or you know for the night or if I don't have anything to plant, the only way I can do that is disconnecting it with the wire tool. So I think what I want to do is repurpose the switch over here in order to manage this system. And then plants need light, so I'm going to have this light be on all the time, and I'm going to have the heater on only at night so that it's not overheating the plants during the day, and it adds to their grow cycle at night. We've discussed these topics in previous videos, but I'm still going to rewire it real quick for you anyway. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to power the switch from the last of our power bank that we were using to power this water system. And then I'm going to take the power out and push it into our water system. And now my switch can activate and deactivate the water system at will. Next for the light, we're going to have the power in go directly into or come directly from the branch that was powering the switch. So now our light is powered all the time. And then we're going to have that pass through power go into our daylight sensor which is currently connected to the heater, and then have the power out on that daylight system go to the heater, so the heater is powered at night instead. Now I have light during the day, heat at night, and a water system activated by a switch. I know that was quite a lot for just one episode. Hopefully, though, this will help you troubleshoot your circuits in the future and develop the skills to create your own as well. And congratulations, this completes the tier 1 level of circuitry in the Rust Electricity for Beginner series. In our next episode, we'll look at some tier 2 circuitry that has even more versatility and creative uses. Thank you so much for watching, I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please hit that thumbs up button. Feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this one in the future. Leave any questions or comments for me down below, and I will see you all next time.